Welcome to this video on eviction processes in Massachusetts. If you're a landlord or a tenant in the state of Massachusetts, it's important to understand the legal procedures for eviction in case of a dispute or breach of agreement. In Massachusetts, eviction is a legal process that requires compliance with state laws and regulations. There are specific steps that must be taken in order to evict a tenant, and failure to follow these steps can result in legal repercussions. This video will provide you on the eviction process in Massachusetts, including the reasons for eviction, the required notices, and court proceedings, and the tenant's rights during the process. So, whether you're a landlord or a property manager who needs to evict a tenant, this video will give you the information you need to navigate the eviction process in Massachusetts. Let's dive right in. Massachusetts eviction laws vary from county to county, but they still follow the same general eviction process. Send a clear written notice, fill out the forms, serve the tenant, attend the trial, wait for judgment. Every eviction process is different and dependent on the lease or rental agreement signed by the tenant and landlord. It is always best to exercise meticulous file keeping to avoid errors that could be exploited by the tenant. This video will break down all the details for landlords to refer to when evicting a tenant. Confirm procedures with your justice court to make sure that the entire process goes as smoothly as possible. Eviction reasons. Number one, failure to comply with rent deadlines. Rent is usually considered late a day past its due. A grace period may be available if stated in the lease rental agreement. Before a landlord can start the eviction process, they are required to give the tenant an official written 14-day notice to quit if rent is paid within those 14 days or any time before the tenant is evicted, then the filing for eviction does not continue. If they are unable to pay, the landlord reserves the right to continue filing the eviction. Landlords can charge a late fee, but they must provide a grace period of at least 30 days. This late fee provision has to be stated in the written lease or rental agreement. Number two, violation of the lease or rental agreement. The rental lease agreement has to be upheld by both tenant and landlord for the entire duration of their stay. Agreements may vary from tenant to tenant. If a tenant violates any terms from the lease agreement, the landlord has to issue a seven day notice to quit for the at will tenants paying rent weekly or daily. There's no clear indication on the notice period for tenants with written leases. Lease violations may include damage to the rental property, smoking and non-smoking areas, keeping pets in pet-free properties, etc. If the violations are not resolved or they remain on the property, then the landlord may continue with the eviction. Landlords are not legally obtained to allow the tenant to resolve the violation before presenting them with the notice to quit. For your own Massachusetts lease agreement, visit Doorloop's forms page linked in the description to download a template along with many other forms. Number three, conducting legal activity. If a tenant has engaged in illegal behavior within the property, the landlord has to issue an official written seven day notice to quit for at will tenants paying rent weekly or daily. There is no clear indication on the notice period for tenants with written leases. Example of illegal activities are homicide, prostitution, theft, violence, assault, possession and or firing of an illegal firearm or weapon, involvement in creation, distribution or consumption of a controlled substance, such as alcohol or drugs. All the listed things also apply if a guest or a co-resident living with the tenant commits the illegal act. Landlords are advised to keep a close eye on their tenants to make sure illegal behavior does not go unnoticed. Number four, non-renewal of the lease after the rental period ends. In Massachusetts, landlords cannot evict a tenant or force them to vacate the property without probable cause. As long as the tenant does not violate any rules, they can stay until their rental period ends. But if they stay in the property even a day after their lease or rental agreement ends and have not arranged for a renewal, landlords can issue a written 30-day notice to vacate. Filing a complaint. Number one, how to file a complaint. 
The eviction process can only begin after the issuance of the appropriate written notice. Enough notice time must have been allowed before filing for eviction. The eviction process is as follows. Service summons and complaint to the tenant. Proceed to the justice court the rental property belongs to. File a copy of summons and complaint along with the following pieces of evidence. Copy of the notice to quit and copy of the return of service. Pay the fees. In Massachusetts, filing fees may start as low as $120, but go as high as $180. It takes about seven to 30 days from the issuance of the notice to vacate. Notice to comply. Before filing for an eviction with the court, you need to issue the tenant a notice to comply. You can either download the free PDF or Word template or create your Massachusetts eviction notice by clicking the link in the description. There's a step-by-step -step wizard that guides you through the entire process to make sure you are submitting a legally correct notice. Keep in mind that the step-by-step -step wizard will ask you to pay a small fee at the end. It's a small price to pay to ensure legal compliance and protection. The the last thing you want is to go to court only to find out you did the first process incorrectly. Serving the tenant. Number one, how to serve a tenant. In Massachusetts, it is a court official who serves the documents to the tenant. This process happens before the complaint is filed to the appropriate justice court. There are several methods available. Personal service. The court official delivers the summons and complaint to the tenant in person. Posting. The court official leaves a copy of the documents for the tenant. It is placed in a secure and visible position by the entrance of the tenant's rented property. Mailing. The court official mails the documents via first class mail with return of service. Neither the landlord nor their lawyer is allowed to serve the documents to the tenant. Number two, after serving the summons and complaint. The landlord files the summons and complaint to the appropriate justice court seven to 30 days after the documents are served to the tenant. The landlord must file it on a Monday. The documents should be served to the tenant at least seven to 30 days before the landlord files them to the appropriate court. If you want to learn more about Massachusetts landlord tenant laws, make sure you click the link in the description to see Dorloop's complete guide to Massachusetts landlord tenant laws for more information. Asking for possession. Number one, filing a motion to obtain judgment and get a judgment for possession. The landlord has to provide a strong argument backed up by solid evidence against the tenant. Should the tenant fail to show up to the hearing, the landlord wins by default. Should the landlord fail to attend the hearing, but the tenant is present, then it is rescheduled for seven days. Number two, next procedure if the tenant disagreed and replied. In the state of Massachusetts, a reply from the tenant is not necessary for a court date to be scheduled. They only have to show up to the hearing. However, they are encouraged, not required, to file a written answer no longer than seven days after the documents are entered in court. If they do not file a written answer but appear in court, the hearing is postponed for another seven days. The landlord needs to support the claim with evidence and show it during the hearing. This could include but is not limited to the following. Copy of deed and lease, rent receipts and ledgers, bank statements, witnesses, photo and video documentation of the violations, correspondence, etc. Eviction hearings are scheduled under one of the following conditions after filing the summons and complaint. Second Thursday, Friday or Monday, third Tuesday, or Wednesday. This is usually 10 to 16 days after the summons and complaint were entered into the court. Tenants have to file a written reply to the complaint no more than seven days after the documents were entered into court. If they are unable to do so, but choose to show up to the hearing, it is postponed for another seven days. If the landlord fails to show up to the hearing, but the tenant does, it is postponed for another seven days. Getting possession. Number one, after the landlord wins the case. In the case that the tenant does not appeal for reconsideration, a writ of execution is issued 10 days after the court rules in favor of the landlord. The writ of execution gives the tenant at least 10 days to vacate the property. Number two, move out process. A law enforcement officer executes the writ. 
This has to be delivered to the tenant between 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on a weekday. It cannot take place on a weekend or a holiday. Once the writ is given to the tenant, they have 48 hours to move out, but they can ask the court for a stay of execution. A stay of execution gives the tenant an additional 12 months if they are over the age of 60 or is a person with disability. Regular tenants are given a maximum of six months. Only the sheriff or the appropriate authorities are allowed to remove the tenant by force. Even if the landlord wins the case, they are not allowed to engage in illegal methods of eviction. To learn more, click the link in the description. The state of Massachusetts does not specify what to do with tenants' belongings. If any belongings are left behind, landlords are advised to contact the tenant and give them a reasonable time frame to claim them. After the time has passed, the tenant's property may be sold or disposed of. Landlords are advised to include a clause in the lease or rental agreement that dictates what has to happen should the client leave behind any personal belongings. The tenants have 48 hours upon receiving the writ of execution to vacate the property. If they received a stay of execution, they have an additional 6 to 12 months to stay in the property. Massachusetts eviction timeline the Massachusetts eviction timeline does not include special cases such as requests for an appeal or a continuance. On average, it would take anywhere between a little over a month to more than one year for a complete eviction process. Showing evidence. Number one, how to keep good records. If a tenant disagrees with the request to begin an eviction process and they reply to the court, it is important that you keep extremely good records of everything so you can prove to the judge and win your case. This part can make or break your entire eviction request in the event of a dispute. You can stay organized by keeping a physical paper trail. This gets very hard to search through, takes up a lot of storage space, and could get lost, damaged, stolen, or burnt in a fire. Scanning documents. Scan every document into your computer. Backups. Store and backup every file using Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive, or any other option that is easily searchable. PMS, use a property management software to save everything from lease agreements signed, documents, violations, emails, notes, invoices, payments, reminders, pictures, videos, and anything you can imagine. This is used best when you also scan every document into your software. A good option is DoorLoop. Evidence to show for not paying rent. If the tenant doesn't pay rent and they dispute that claim, it's important that you show the judge the following. Your lease agreement. Showing the terms of the agreement when rent is due and any penalties for late payment. All payments. Showing all the previous payments, how they are normally made, check, credit card, ACH, etc., and what date they were normally paid on. Any payment returns. If their check bounced, their bank account had insufficient funds, or they did a chargeback dispute on their credit card, show this to the judge. Also, show any fees your bank may have charged you and any penalties you are owed according to your lease agreement in order to be reimbursed. All messages. If you sent your attendant automated or manual payment reminders by text, email, a letter, or mail, it's important to show this. While it's usually not needed, it is still good to show that they were aware of the situation and were given time to cure and make payment. This is why it's always best to have everything in writing instead of any phone calls or face-to-face -face meetings. Number three, evidence to show for lease violations. If you're evicting the tenant for lease violations, for example, noise complaints, unauthorized pets, or property damages, it is important to show proof from any of the following methods. Security cameras. If you have a surveillance system that can show them committing the crime or lease violation, it's safe to say you will normally win this dispute. Video. If you don't catch them in the act, the next best thing is to record a video with your phone of any damages which could be used in court to prove the violation. Pictures. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. In this case, a picture could be worth thousands of dollars. Even if you take a video, it's important to show the judge any pictures too, as it's usually easier to see by email or printed. Lease terms. 
Once again, show the court which term they violated in their lease agreement. Don't worry if you don't have every single term spelled out in your rental agreement. If the violation is bad enough, it might not be needed to have it written. As a good practice though, start adding all of the potential reasons to evict a tenant into your agreement. I hope this video has provided you with a clear understanding of the eviction process in Massachusetts. Whether you are a landlord or a tenant, it's important to know your rights and responsibilities when it comes to eviction. Remember, eviction is a legal process that requires compliance with state laws and regulations, and it's always best to seek legal advice if you're unsure about your rights or obligations. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope that it's been helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and check out these informative videos on property management. Thank you again and have a great day.